there. I, hi there. I just wanted to pop in today again and just chat with you about um, how we are all connected. And uh, if you are an empath, you will feel this connection more than anything. And I wanted to, I wanted to actually show you something. Um, I wanted to show you this skirt. So ignore the shoes. These are my garden waterproof shoes, but the skirt. So some of you may have read my book, What If This Is Heaven? If you've read that book, you will uh, remember that there's a story in there of me in India where I was uh, in Pune, downtown Pune, and I was with my mom and I was going through to all these little shops. And if you know anything about the shops in Pune, like we were in MG Road, Clover Center, if you know anything about it, it's like a labyrinth, like a cacophony of little, 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 little shops selling different things. And, um, and so one of the shops, this was hanging outside, this skirt. And I was like, oh my God, what a pretty skirt. I have to have it. And so I go inside the store and there's this wonderful young lady who obviously owns that little store. And they're all little, 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 little stores, like little. Um, and so she owns the store and she says, welcome. And I said, oh, I really like that skirt hanging outside in the window. And, she, and so she goes and she pulls it out of the window for me and she says, here, go ahead and try it on. And I'm thinking, this is such a little store. Is there a place to try it on? And she takes me just to the corner and there's a curtain and I step into the corner and she draws the curtain around me and I try on the, the, the skirt and I really like it and then as she's talking to my mom and to me my mom is sitting outside the cubicle that I'm inside and um, and, and so this was in 2012 literally right after my book Dying to Be Me came out and my book Dying to Be Me came out in America and then it was, came out in England and, you know, and, and I didn't expect to be known anywhere else in the world. And so there I am in this tiny little store trying on the skirt and then this lady, and as I come out and I show my mom and I show her and she goes, she goes, that looks really good. And so, so normally I wear it with a shorter blouse so mm -hmm. you can see the whole skirt. But, um, and then she, uh, and I said, yeah, I really like it. I think I'm going to take it. And then she says, to me, she says, I can tell from your accent, you're not from here, where are you from? And I said, oh, I'm from Hong Kong. And, uh, and then she said to me, oh, what a coincidence. I'm reading a book right now written by an Indian girl, an Indian woman from Hong Kong. And I said, really? And then she reaches behind the counter and she pulls out a copy of Dying to Be Me, not realizing that I am the author of that book. And so I said, oh my God, that's my book. That's me. I'm Anita Marjani. And she freaked out. She was like, oh my God. Now bear in mind back then the book had literally just come out. So there were no YouTube videos of me, nothing. So she had no idea what I looked like or anything. And so when I said, but that's me, that's my book. I am Anita Marjani. She freaked out and she started crying. And she goes, I can't believe it's you. And she said, what would draw you into my store? And I said, your skirt, but you know, something <laughs> else must have drawn me in. And I said to her, where did you, how did you get the book? And she said, my cousin in England read it and, and posted it to me saying, you really have to read this book. And she said, I would have no idea how to get it. Or I wouldn't have known about it because there was no fanfare or publicity in India for my book. It was all in the United States but, and a little bit in England. I'm leaning forward because uh, I want to get my, project my voice, because um, I realize with the phone, it's quite distant. Um, so, so anyway, so her cousin had sent her this book and the thing is, the next thing that happened was, she said, she started crying. She said, you have no idea how much your book has been moving me. And she said, look, look at all the, my pencil marks and my stickies and all that. And then she stepped outside her store and she started calling all the people in the stores around, all the little, little stores around. And she goes, come here, come here. I want you to meet the author of the book I've been reading. And she said to me, 
that every day at lunchtime, normally all of us, we kind of have, used to have lunch together, but recently I've been telling all my little neighbors, the neighboring store people, that I'm not free for lunch, I'm gonna be reading this book. I, and so she said, I use every spare minute to read this book, and, and so all the other people around here was, would say, like, what is it about this book that's so compelling? And so, and so it, she said, so, so I want them all to meet you. And so they all came into the store and they said hi. And then she ordered tea. And so it became like a nice, a, a little bit of a party and a gathering. So anyway, that was so fun. And I kept in touch with her for a while. Unfortunately, the last time I went to India and I went to that spot, her store wasn't there anymore. And I don't know how to find her. Her name is Geeta. Uh, her store was in Clover Center in MG Road, Pune, India. So if anyone knows her, please tell her to watch this video. But I wrote up that story in the book, What If This Is Heaven? So she actually said while she was reading, she said to me while she was reading the book, she was willing herself, like saying that I must meet this woman one day. I must meet this woman one day. And so in a way, I believe that because I happened to be there, my energy connected with hers and I went into the store. And as a result, she, she didn't sell me the skirt, she insisted I take it as a gift so that I would remember her every time I wore it. So I wore it at a few events after that. But um, anyway, the reason for my story is to, to, to show you how we are all connected. I must have picked up on her energy. I must have gone in that direction and spotted that skirt. Um, you know, it must, there must have been something there that caused me to go in that direction. We are all connected. If only we knew that. We don't use that trait enough. Empaths feel it more than others. And why I think it's important to know this is because if you know that you're connected, if you know that you feel the energies of other people, you know that, um, that you're sensitive to the energies around you, it can work to your benefit in that it, you can use it to intuit what's going on. You can use it to uplift you. And what I want you to know though is that it becomes really important if you are an empath to surround yourself with energies that uplift you. Because empaths have a tendency to um, adjust their energy to that which is around them. They have a tendency to do that. They have a tendency to kind of be chameleons and morph with what's around them. So you always kind of want to morph upward. You want to morph and become, uh, morph into something that uplifts you not into something that depletes you. So be aware that we are all connected. Number one, we are all connected. Number two, empaths are more sensitive to that connection. Number three, empaths can use this as a tool to uplift them by being aware of it, by tuning in and saying that I have this intuition, let me tune in, let me use this to find my way around the world. And number four, remember that because empaths are super sensitive, empaths tend to morph and they're like chameleons. Um, so you always want to surround yourself with energies and people that are uplifting so that you, you adjust yourself to energies that are uplifting and not uh, depleting. Last week, I did a video on um, uh, on empaths and narcissists in relationships and on codependent relationships. I had an incredible response from that from people. There were tons and tons and tons of responses. All of you, so many of you related to that. So I want to again reiterate, if you are an empath um, and if you are connected, you have to honor what it is you feel. It becomes more important because what happens is that if you get into a relationship with a narcissist, you will have a tendency to morph yourself because you're connected to what the narcissist is feeling. You will honor the narcissist, so you will have a tendency to honor the narcissist's wishes or the other person's wishes 
more than your own. And so you will then start to morph yourself and chameleonize yourself to fit in with this narcissist, which will completely deplete you. Be aware that you have a tendency to do this. Um, somebody commented, and I already responded to that, is that is it possible for two people in codependent relationship to, for it to actually work, for two codependent people in a relationship for it to work? Yes, it's absolutely possible as long as one of them is not a narcissist and as long as they are both aware that they are codependent on each other and as long as they make a commitment to work towards uplifting themselves and each other. If they make that commitment, it could be an amazing relationship. If they are both empaths and they both make the commitment that they are going to work on uplifting themselves and on reminding each other to up and uplift each other, then it could really be an amazing relationship. Um, somebody also asked me whether Danny's and my relationship could possibly be somewhat codependent since I have mentioned that I came back uh, because my purpose was linked to Danny's uh, purpose. So yes, absolutely, our relationship could be somewhat codependent, but we're both very aware of it, of our connection to each other. We're both very aware about uplifting each other, and we're both very, very empathic towards each other's needs and feelings. So I don't feel depleted by him. In fact, I feel energized by his presence. And I believe he feels the same way about me. And so even if we're codependent, but as long as we're feeling energized by each other's presence, then it works. Um, so, and oh, and by the way, if you have any other questions right now, um, Abby, who is behind the screen right now, will read them out to me. I do have one question if you're ready for them. Sure. So someone was asking how on the other side, it was very early question, so I'm trying to remember. Um, on the other side, can you go into how you remain an individual versus how you remain connected and kind of give us an explanation of that? Sure, and I've explained this actually in some of my earlier videos, so I won't go into too much detail. I'd love for you to check out my earlier videos as well as my book, Dying to Be Me. But um, it is kind of like you are still, you are a facet of the whole, of the whole soul. And you are connected to everyone, but yet you have a, a facet of yourself that is uh, individual. So the, um, an example I often use is if you remember, if you remember back in the 80s, I don't know if you're old enough to remember, that back in the days of dis the disco era, there used to be something called a mirror ball in the discos. And this mirror ball consists of lots of little tiles of mirrors. Um, so let's pretend that whole mirror ball is source or God, and each little tile is a soul. And so, and, and then each little tile, when you look at the walls around the room, each little tile is refracting a dot, a spot of light, a speck of light on the wall. Imagine if each of those specks of light is us in physical form. One of those specks of light is you, another one is me. And so each of these specks of light believe that they are separate physical beings. And there they are, going around the room, as the lights go around, as the ball spins around, these lights are moving, and but they're never touching each other. They're all individual, separate individual specks of light. That's us, separate physical beings, thinking that we're completely separate. What we don't realize, and we realize when we die, is that we are one mirror tile from that mirror ball. So that mirror tile is your soul. That soul is connected to all the other souls. So even if that soul has lived multiple lives, all that information of the multiple lives is, is contained on that one mirror tile, but that mirror tile is connected to all the other tiles. So they have, each one has access to all the information of all the other tiles, but all of them is part of the whole, which is source of God. So each one of us, each one of our souls, is a facet of God choosing to express itself right here, right now, as this speck of light in this moment. That's how I would kind of explain it, where we are separate, but we are also all connected. 
And then I have a question which is more related to synchronicities, but someone is asking how can we use synchronicities and our connection to find specific people, for example, a soulmate or something? You can do it. So first of all, the most important thing is to value and honor yourself because like attracts like, and that's just something that works. Like attracts like. Sometimes the law of attraction makes it more complicated depending who's delivering it or who's talking about it about you have to visualize this and that and the other but it's you don't have to worry about any of that as long as you enhance your own energy you expand your own energy by feeding and nourishing yourself uh, by taking care of yourself by loving yourself with lots of self-care and when I say self-care it means caring about your whole self, including your soul, your spirit, your all of you. Um, what does self-care really mean? Let's get to the nitty-gritty. It means saying no to things that are not you. That's something we forget to do. It means stop worrying about displeasing other people. It means stop being addicted to um, stop being addicted to what's the word for it? approval. Stop being an approval seeker. Be your own person. That's what self-love means. It means do not seek approval. Do not be afraid to disappoint people. Um, uh, don't be afraid to say no if something doesn't resonate with you. Don't worry that people will be disappointed if you say no. Um, it means uh, realizing that you are a facet of God. These are all, these are all signs of self-love. Um, it means allowing yourself, your soul, to express itself for who it is and who it came here to be. It means um, not waiting for other people to give you the green light to do something. It means being able to receive. That's a big one. How could I forget that one? How are your receiving channels? Most, uh, a lot of empaths are really, really good at giving of themselves, rescuing people, but they're terrible at receiving. They're terrible at allowing other people to give to them or the universe to give to them. Open your receiving channels. These are the things you have to do for yourself. And as your energy grows, then you will start to attract at that level. You don't have to be specific. I always prefer when people are not specific, when they, you know, it's not about saying, I want this person, this soulmate to be like this, this, this. No. It's um, about you. It's about allowing yourself to vibe at a higher level so that you are attracting at that level. And then allowing the universe to, to uh, gift you, which means your receiving channels have to be open. So that's an important thing. So no matter how much you follow vision boards and do the visualization, if you don't love yourself and your receiving channels are closed and your vibe is low, that stuff is not going to happen. Okay, so work on expansion. Um, and then we have a couple people who are asking about um, how to shake off when they uh, when they feel like they've taken on someone else's energy, or how to lift themselves up when they are an empath. And I just wanted to direct them to your YouTube channel because you've done a bunch of videos lately about empath self care. Yes, yes. So I have a lot of tools in my empath self care videos check out the ones titled Empath Self-Care. Um, even sometimes having a shower helps, uh, listening to music, but please check out those. I go into detail. And also in my book, Sensitive is the New Strong, um, I speak a lot about empath self-care and how to take care of yourself as an empath. And the story I spoke about earlier about the skirt is from my book, What If This Is Heaven? So. So when that happened to me, right after Dying to Be Me came out, I included that story in my subsequent book, What If This Is Heaven. Um, also, because I'm an empath, I absolutely love, oh sorry about that, there's a phone ringing in the background, that's Danny's phone, and he's not at his desk. But um, I absolutely love in-person events. Uh, as an empath, I love in-person events uh, because I get to connect with people, I get to um, I get to feel your energy, and what I do at in-person events is that, and what we all do together, is that we uplift the energy in the room. 
so that we entrain everybody to be at a more uplifted state. So it makes me so happy that in-person events are opening again. And, um, and so my first one will be a retreat in Sedona, and I'd love, love, love for you to join me. Um, my events, I try to keep them as high vibe and uplifting as possible so that you are at that level where you are attracting good health. And you don't even have to figure it out, but you are at the level where your soul is attracting what it needs for its highest good in this life, whether it's, whether it's uh, abundance or relationship or health or whatever it is. Um, my online sanctuary is for the same purpose. It's about really vibing at a higher level. It really is so that you get what you need. It is particularly useful and helpful for empaths because as I said, empaths adjust themselves to the level of the people around them. You need to feel what it feels like to be at a higher level. Unfortunately, in this world, we're bombarded with lower states, bombarding us from the TV, from mass media, from mainstream news, all of this, and uh, all the ads on TV, the drug ads, all the ads that make you feel insignificant or that you're not complete unless you have a bazillion dollars to buy this amazing car or whatever. Um, so, so uh, all everything out there seems to be, so we live in a world where it appears as though everything out there um, seems to diminish our energy and make us feel that we need that, whatever it is, in order to feel good. You don't need any of that. You just need to learn, and there's not a lot of people, not a lot of mainstream medical doctors, adverts, news, anything, mainstream, nothing in mainstream is out there for your good uplifting your energy, which is why I make it a point that every single one of my videos, every single one of my books, everything I do, my online sanctuary, my events, the purpose is to uplift your energy. It is to bring us together, not to divide us. Divisiveness, which is what's happening outside, is very energy depleting. The bigger problem is not whether to mask or not mask, whether to vaccinate or not ma ma vaccinate. That the bigger problem is the divisiveness that this is causing. That is the bigger problem. And so at my events, we, will, we have no political agenda, we have no other agenda than for you to really, really get into a space of learning what it feels like to uplift your energy. And when you do that, you will not want to leave that energetic space that you create, but you will take it with you wherever you go. You will, stop, um, you will stop entraining yourself to people who are on a, um, on a lower energy field. In fact, what you will do is you will be inviting people to join you at that state. So when you go back home to your families and so on, or if you join my sanctuary, um, when you're dealing with, with your own people and your own environment, you will start to notice over time as you get into the habit of getting into this other higher energetic state that you will require that the people around you meet you where you're at because you will no longer want to come down and meet them where they're at. And you will be doing them a favor when you start to require that from the people around you. You will be doing them a favor because if they can step up, they will never look back. And this is what all of us who are listening in, the best thing that we can do for the planet and for everyone around us is to uplift ourselves so that the people around us feel uplifted by our very presence. So on that note, I thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to talking with you again next week. I'll see you all soon. Oh, and if you loved this video, Please click like, please click subscribe, please subscribe to my newsletter, my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram, whatever. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again.